everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Canna Campbell. A quick reminder before we launch into today's video, which is a handbag video around capsule wardrobe. I want to make sure that you are subscribed to my YouTube channel and of course that notification bell is switched on. That's really important because every Thursday I publish a fresh video for you. All right, so today I want to talk to you about handbags. Now, you guys know I apply a minimalistic philosophy into most areas in my life. I have a one area where I get a leave pass and that is handbags. I really love a beautiful handbag and I don't hold back. I love how a handbag really elevates an outfit. I love how a handbag helps keep me organized. I love how a handbag helps show my signature style. And for me, I like buying a beautiful, well-made handbag that can stand the test of time because cost per wear is really important to me. And if I really love something, I want it to last forever. Am I asking too much? So the other day I was thinking about my handbags and I was also thinking about my home and contents insurance because I was reviewing the premiums that I'm paying to see if I could save some money. And my handbags are covered under my home and contents insurance, obviously. But I was thinking about what happened if my house burnt down and I lost all of my handbags and I was only allowed to buy five handbags. What handbags would I buy? And it got me thinking. So my answers I wanted to share with you in this video because I feel like my answers would be really helpful for anyone who is just dipping their toe in the luxury handbag market and want some, I guess, direction or some advice or some clarity as to where they should focus their resources, both financially and time and quality first. So these are the top five handbags I recommend you should own and as you build up your handbag collection. All right, so the first handbag I would recommend is a large tote. Now, this is actually not an area I would recommend you spend a large amount of money. I don't think you necessarily need to because, let's be honest, a large tote will get thrown around everywhere, but it will also be incredibly helpful. So a large black tote like this, and this is mine, it was from State of Escape, it's made of neoprene, I think it was like $300 or maybe $350, it goes in the washing machine, but I use this a lot and it's incredibly helpful. So for me, I originally bought this as a baby bag because as I said, it holds everything, it's machine washable, and it's light, which is really important. However, I now use it for going to the gym. I also use it for weekends away because it can, I can just pop it over my handbag with other handbags inside and all, it big enough to hold all my toiletries and my clothes, and it obviously goes neatly in an overhead um, storage on a plane, and it's it's, it's a great bag to have. However, I throw it around. So I don't want to spend a large amount of money on a bag that I would throw around. So this is a great bag to buy. A large, lightweight, still quality tote. It's also incredibly financially friendly. The second bag I would recommend is a work bag. Now for a work bag, my personal preference is something that's quite structured or looks quite serious and I guess professional because you, if you're in a work zone, obviously you want to give off that impression of being professional, of being organized, of being you know, well put together, that you've put time and effort into your presentation and, and shows a sign of respect. So for me personally, I would recommend that you stick with the basics first and that is you get a black leather handbag but make sure you get a very durable leather handbag. So like a grain, like a leather, and ideally it tr it's structured. So the two handbags I would recommend are, number one would be something like this. It's a great size. It's not too small because if you turn up to a meeting with a small handbag, you look like you're more, your priorities are about going out having a party. And if you look, if you turn up with a bag that's too big, you actually, I think, can look a little bit disorganized that you need, that you haven't, you're just having to carry around your whole entire life everywhere, like the kitchen sinks in there. So I think th this is a great size. Also, it's a really well-made handbag. I'm not saying rush out and go and buy a Chanel handbag. That's crazy. And um, this is pre-loved, and this is also, I should point out, I think like 10 or 11 or 12 years old. 
but a, this is a great size. Now, I think with a work bag, also make sure you've got some beautiful hardware with that bag because that will then complement any jewelry that you choose to wear. And again, it can give it a more sophisticated, high-end luxe feel without necessarily having to spend a fortune. So this is a great bag and it's black, so it's incredibly versatile. My next go-to if I had to buy a work bag would be something like this, um, a Celine, uh, this is, I think it's called the belt bag. Um, again, a great color, so if you don't want to buy a black bag, I can wear this in so many different ways and styles. The color is fantastic. It goes with light colors, it will go for summer and spring, but also will go with a gorgeous beige coat, um, woolen coat, black coat, of course, navy, it's fantastic. And again, it's structured so I can neatly fit my wallet, my keys, my notebook, any pens, anything I need neatly fits in here without looking like I've got my overnight bag to a meeting. So beautiful bag, so happy with this. And again, you can actually buy these pre-loved for like I think a quarter of the price that they actually retail brand new. And it's a very classic style, it doesn't go out in fashion. Now if you're someone who hates a structured bag, I've, I haven't forgotten about you, I've thought of you. And my next go-to would be a Givenchy Nightingale bag. Now, this bag would probably be as old as my Chanel bag. Um, again, incredibly versatile. I can I can put it over here. Um, I would I can put it carry it like this. It's incredibly versatile. It's also that really thick, solid, strong uh, leather that's incredibly durable. Because as I said, if I'm going to be buying a beautiful work bag, I want it to last for 10, 15, 20 years at least. I'm a fussy shopper, so this is great. It's a bit slouchy, but I think with the hardware, it still gives a professional look. And obviously you don't want to overstuff it as well, but very versatile. I've got girlfriends who have this and they wear it to work and they look fantastic, but they will wear a very structured professional look and then take a slouchy bag as a bit of a, a comparison. And I do think it does still have a luxy, a luxy, luxy feel. Uh, okay, a beige bag is going to be your best friend. A nice, well-made, high-quality beige bag is incredibly valuable. Sorry, Giuseppe's barking downstairs. Um, all right, this I bought in Paris with Rocco eight years ago, and I still get people approaching me, asking me if I'd ever be interested in selling it. My answer is always no. It would be one of the most worn handbags I own. This is absolutely brilliant, okay. A beige bag, this type of size, is perfect for summertime and springtime because it's light, it's fun, it's fashionable. You can wear it as a crossbody and still have two hands free. And for me in my life right now, I either have a dog lead in my arm or a child in my arm, or quite often one in each arm and still holding and juggling a dog leads or pushing a pram. So this is really, really helpful. It's the perfect size in that I can fit my mobile phone, a lipstick, sunglasses, maybe some sunscreen or hand sanitizer, not too much, not too little, but it's great. And it goes with all of the colors in my wardrobe. I can also wear it with black, but it's very versatile. Again, it's the really high quality leather that's so incredibly durable. And this does get, you know, bashed around a lot and it still looks new. And it's got that luxy high end feel with the gold hardware, which complements my jewelry, even silver jewelry if I want to wear it. So really, really great bag. And it looks absolutely fantastic with white, I have to say. Again, just so incredibly classic. I would, I would be so devastated if this burnt down in a fire. Next up is evening bags. Now, I think you can sometimes skimp a little bit on evening bags. You don't necessarily need to spend an absolute fortune. Because let's be honest, like how, often, how many times a week do you go out? If you think about your work bag, you're gonna use your work bag most likely five days per week. An evening bag, you'll maybe use one day per week. So I don't necessarily think you need to put all your financial resources into you know, an evening bag or clutch. There are so many great, beautiful clutches out there that cost a fraction. I wanna show you one of my favorites. All right, so this I bought in Beirut in Lebanon. Um, it's actually made by the female prisoners to give them a skill that they can, so they can earn some money and then use once they get out of prison. These are beautifully made. They are so beautiful. They're Sarah's bags, they're quite famous now. And this is great because it's, again, a classic color, really well made, versatile, goes with absolutely everything. It's got the detailing that gives that kind of fun, luxy feel. And it's got a story behind it, which I absolutely love. But this cost me, I think, about $300. I bought it nine years ago, maybe more, no, no, more than that. I bought it eight 
oh, no, sorry, I bought it 10 or 11, I can't do my math today, 10 or 11 years ago, and I absolutely love it. But this is great. I can wear it as a clutch. It's not too big. It's not too small. But if you want something that you're looking for a luxury purchase, I have to say these are so good. Um, I wear these not only at nighttime as a clutch, but also during the daytime as well. They're so versatile. The, the Diorama, um, again, metallic feel the strong um, durable grain leather i can pop the straps inside the bag and it's a clutch and i wear it under my arm the other option is i wear it with jeans and a white t-shirt and this is a really fun way of like having a fun sporty edgy look um, when i'm out and about with the kids holds doesn't hold that much to be honest it holds my mobile phone maybe some lip gloss and maybe some keys and that's pretty much it but it's it's fine and it's just a fun bag again i have two hands free and i can wrap the the strap around multiple times if i just want to have it sitting under my arm initially all you do to do that is you thread some ribbon silk ribbon through this and pop it inside and you can just have the length however short or long as you like so it comes in black as well it comes in actually so many colors these bags and again you can find them on the second hand market exceptionally um, reasonably priced i will link some in the video description box below again another fantastic pre um, evening clutch i think i bought this for like 800 dollars pre-loved it's a louis vuitton altair clutch they don't make this anymore unfortunately but the high luxury end feel is actually a satin fabric i don't recommend um but I, when I saw this, I really wanted it for years and years, and I just couldn't afford it. So I slowly and steadily saved up over time and bought this. And again, this bag would be, I reckon it's pre-Rocco being born. So it's it's years old. Like, it, But again, absolutely stunning. And um, as I said, I, this retails for, like, at the time, it was like three and a half, four thousand dollars $4,000. I bought it for a fraction of the price. And again, I don't need to spend all that money on the, these types of bags because I don't go to cocktail parties that often. You need to make sure you spend your money on your real lifestyle needs you need to make sure it's versatile and it works for you and your style and taste the fifth bag um and that is where i like let loose i be honest with myself i own it i just be real and raw and it's where i embrace that pop of color because i'd say 80 percent of my wardrobe is so conservative it's the blacks the navies the grays the beiges the whites and that's great because it allows me to maximize what my wardrobe without spending a whole type of amount of money and without having to own a whole pile of stuff because that gives me major anxiety. But, you know, I do let myself, I embrace that inner wild child that likes to just like explode like a packet of Skittles or Smarties everywhere. And I would allow myself to have a pop of color because this is going to perk up my mood during winter when it's really cold um, and really add a bit of vibrant color and life to my life to my my world but also it's going to work with all the classics in my color in my wardrobe so when i'm wearing another white dress or another navy dress i can add a really fun pop of color which really changes the look and feel of my outfit it still elevates it but it adds a sense of fun and these are the two bags i would recommend and by the way for the record i have linked a whole pile of fantastic dupes in this video in the video description box below so that I'm not sending you off to go and spend a huge amount of money on you know, prices and brands that aren't right for you. I found some amazing dupes and I will fully disclose I own dupes. So uh, this is a Chanel um, bright blue handbag. This is, blue is my, actually my favorite color, but obviously it's not a staple color. Um, it's a fun color. It looks beautiful with white. It looks beautiful with beiges and grays and I can get away with wearing jeans with this as well. But it just adds that bit of fun. Again, it's a great size. Um, it's the small, it fits wallet, it fits my phone, it fits sunglasses, it fits some lipstick. So again, a really great size. It's that fun structured look because I think if you're going to go with a fun bag, that's bright, loud color or pattern, you need to make sure that there is still an element of professionalism, whether it be structured or whether it be beautiful hardware or whether it be the right size. I think those things all kind of come into play. So you really need to shop mindfully. You should think about it and just make sure if you're gonna go rogue and buy something that's really loud and fun and colorful, that you have done all your research, research beforehand and you know exactly what you're buying and it ticks all of the boxes. So the other wild child that I'm going to share with you, it's just by my feet hiding down here, 
And this is, you would have seen this on my Instagram account. Again, this was something I bought for myself after achieving a huge financial goal of mine. It's my Chanel number no. 19. Again, a great size. Not as structured as my others, but still structured. Um, it's a really fun color. Again, it adds a pop of color into the dull, dark, cold um, seasons. But then it's loud and proud during spring and summer if I want to wear it with a really brightly colored dress because it's so strong. It's got such a loud, like, presence about it. I can actually wear it with a bright, bright purple dress or a bright pink dress or a pattern green um, like hibiscus dress that I own. Is it, there's pretty much nothing that this goes with and it's it just adds that injection of color and I can even be really cheeky and t team it with a little bit of leopard print and it, it, I, I can get away with it. So these are the, the five handbags. If you're building up your collection you don't want to own too many but you want to make sure that you Spend your money in the right type of way to cover all of your needs and wants. These are the five areas I recommend you focus on. And to summarize, because obviously being a financial planner, I want to make sure you don't blow your money. Make sure you buy what is practical that matches your needs. Also, I recommend think about your color palette. Stick with the staples before you go rogue like my blue and pink. So stick with the blacks, the cream, the beiges, the greys. Because a handbag, you're going to put it down on a table. You might put it on the floor, even if it's on carpet. You want to make sure that it's not going to get like a, be a, a sponge for any dirty marks and colors that you're always going to be babysitting your handbag and give you stress and anxiety. The next thing is obviously quality over quantity. I would much rather own five beautiful bags than 20 or 30 or 40 like average handbags that look really tired and tatty because when they look tired and tatty it really just brings you down your outfit you start your whole your whole appearance can really change with a, a handbag that, that looks like you haven't taken care of it and that doesn't mean you have to go and spend huge amounts of money to have a beautiful handbag you can buy pre-loved and there are some great dupes out there which I'll show you actually now because it happens to be sitting right here like this the Stan Studio this is a great dupe for the um, Batiga Veneta um, chain bag. It cost me $300 through Farfetch. I love this and the, the real one of this, not that this is a fake, but it's a dupe, um, is something like $6,000. That's crazy. So you don't need to go out and spend a fortune, but go with quality rather than quantity. I'm um, sorry, I'm having to put my notes down here today because my brain's not switched on. Make sure it's comfortable. Another thing, there's nothing worse than a handbag that's really heavy, it digs into your shoulders. Um, you walk around knocking people as you go through aisles or getting on the train or on the bus or around the office. Like that's not going to work for you. It's going to annoy you. You're going to have to constantly be saying sorry, sorry, sorry. You bump people or it's going to be too small and you can't fit things on. So you've got stuff in your pockets or you've got two handbags sometimes. Make sure it's a comfortable bag. And then the, uh, the final point, my very responsible financial point, make sure it's versatile. Look at the hardware. Make sure you can dress it up, you can dress it down. You can carry it in different ways to create different feminine looks or just to help be practical in your everyday life. This is incredibly important. They're the five rules that I follow when I go handbag shopping and if they don't tick every single box, uh-uh, sugar mama does not let me buy it. All right, everyone, that is it for this video. I have linked to the video description box below. Great sites for you to refer to, Instagram accounts to follow, and my rules, and of course, only buy what you love, value, use, and appreciate. And make sure if you're buying a handbag, it's because you have achieved all of your other financial goals for this year first. All right, all right, everyone, ciao for now, and make sure you're subscribed.